Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for May the 2nd. I'm Jonathan Keensler. Today's scripture reading is found in 2 Samuel chapters 1 and 2 and Luke chapter 22 verses 28 through 53. The title of my devotional is David's Great Love. And we're going to be looking at 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 24. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you luxuriously in scarlet, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. David expresses his great love toward his father-in-law Saul and his best friend Jonathan. He recounts their triumphs and the great impact their deaths have on Israel. This was no ordinary love that Um, David expresses here. However, it's even exemplified in his treatment of Saul. Now, we looked at this in our past, in our last devotion um, on 1 Samuel, um, and how David exhibited a heart after God's own. And here we see, too, that at the end of his life, after God has brought Saul down, even in battle, David did not hold bitterness in his heart toward him even though he had tried to kill him and pursue him over and over in his life. David is an example of someone who loved his enemy. And on two separate occasions, God delivered Saul into David's hand, but both times David showed mercy and would not hurt him. So where did David get such a love for Saul? It was based on God's choice of Saul as king. In other words, David considered conspiring against Saul as fighting against God. And just as it was God's choice of Saul um, as to reign as king, it was David's choice to love him. And that's something we need to remember. Why do we love others? Is it because they make us feel good? Is it because they treat us right? Or is it because God loves them? And so because God loves them, we choose to love them as well. And remember, for God, it's a choice as well. God chose to love them. And so it's obvious here that David did not keep a record of wrongs. As 1 Corinthians 13 lays out for us, verses 4 to 8, in how love acts. Verse 13, 5 says that love does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. It It is not provoked. It does not take into account a wrong suffered. Um, and we see that it's another translation actually says that it does not keep a record even of wrongs. And so David chose to forgive those things. And here he see, he, we see him not remembering that, but rather he chooses to remember Saul's triumphs um, for the good that he did for for the people. And that's what love does, is it covers over a multitude of sins. When we love someone, we'll forgive them, we'll walk in forgiveness, and we'll choose to remember the good things about them. Now that's actually and really how God thinks of us. He forgives us. He will not act against the the evil things that we've done um, against him, but he thinks of us in terms of the good that we that we do, especially in terms of that he works in and through us. Now, David would not pay back evil for evil, but rather he shows um, good for evil. He gives Saul, who who gave him evil again and again, he returns that with, with good. Now, in Saul's death, David honors him with a song that remembers his valor and greatness. And he also helps Israel to mourn the loss of their first king. And I think that's important also. Are we helping other people to, to show and demonstrate love? I mean, in the place of in this time, in terms of grief and sorrow and suffering um, that would that Israel would have experienced at the loss of their king, David helps them to to move on and experience God's grace also. So do you treat your enemies the way David treated Saul? We're never more like Jesus than when we love our enemies. We see this over and over again in Jesus' life, um, but it probably exemplified the best in Luke chapter 23, verse 34, that as he's dying, even on the cross, Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Um, And even at this time, the soldiers were casting lots, dividing up his garments among themselves. Even while they were stealing his clothes, he's praying that God would forgive them. So while our words sometimes seem to have little effect on others, 
Actions that demonstrate true forgiveness are a powerful witness of God's presence and mission in the world. Um, and it's not that words aren't important. We need to show words. But sometimes actions, undeserved action even toward us, is, has a profound effect on, on us. And so it's not that words are empty. It's that words without ba- actions that back it up. Um, are not full as God would intend. Now, are you committed to showing God's love toward others, even those who hurt you? Do you walk in forgiveness? Do you make sure you don't keep a record of wrong? Are you walking in God's grace? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for uh, this word and that, Lord, how David acted was not even of himself. It was from you. You're the one who gave David a heart after your own. You're the one who gave him your spirit. And in the same way you promised to do for us, that you will take our hard, stony heart out of us and put in a, a heart of flesh, a heart that listens and responds to you. And you give us your Holy Spirit and cause us to walk in your ways. So, Lord, help us to submit to you. Help us to act out of the power and strength that you give us in the Holy Spirit. I thank you that you love us uh, and that you forgive us. Help us also to walk in that, that same love toward others. In your name we pray. 